clairvoyance of being presses limited, and so we rely on press releases. This week there has been one game that has been involved in a lot of press releases, and that is PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. The first PUBG related thing to talk about is from Mikonet, they're the ones that do the proprietary death cam and the action cam for PUBG. And in their release they say somewhere between 70 and 80% of players utilise the death cams, which obviously gives people an advantage or at least gives people the ability to work out how they died and so how to not die that way again. So these death cams really have become part of the learning experience within the PUBG framework. It also means that their software has become a big success. The penultimate part of the PUBG related news is about the eSports League. It is set up by PGL who is an eSports company, they do Dota and CSGO and the like, and the price pool, just like CSGO and Dota, is $100,000. It's going to take place between the 22nd and the 25th of March in Bucharest. As for the teams that are going to take part, 11 out of the 16 teams are going to be the invitational part of the invitational and have guaranteed places, while the rest of the places are going to have to fight for a place through qualifiers. The last bit of PUBG related news is something that's kind of tangentially PUBG related as it is a report about the gaming industry. Specifically, it is Super Data Research's 2017 Year in Review Financial Report. I'm going to put a link in the description to the whole report and to the website so you can read the whole thing there because there's a lot of stuff there, but I want to specifically mention something about the PUBG in esports. Is that PUBG is seen as the breakout PC title of 2017 and it made $712 million dollars in revenue. In revenue means before taxes, it's just money that people have put into it before taxes, salaries, it's just input cash. But I want to make sure that everyone, 712 million dollars. And the game's only in early access. Shits remind you, it's still in its relatively buggy form as everyone's sometimes complains about 712 million dollars and the esports note from the research paper because of the PUBG thing from before is that esports generally has generated 756 million dollars and is estimated for the year of 2018 to break 1 billion dollars in revenue seriously esports is if anything this shows the ins the almost unfathomable amount of money that can sometimes it's as soon as you get to the popularity that games like PUBG have you start counting your revenue by the hundreds of millions and a brief little pin to that I got the uh, quarterly report for EA the uh, the other week a billion dollars in one quarter eh, it's hmm right big money and for the final bit of news is about the GDC Awards, the Game Developers Choice Awards. With the big headline for the release saying that Rami Ismail is going to be getting the Ambassador Award, the Atari founder Nolan Bushnell is going to get the Pioneer Award, and Tim Schafer of Double Fine and LucasArts is going to get the Lifetime Achievement Award. All of those people are very deserving of their awards. They are sort of well-known figures in the gaming industry, Tim Schafer being one of the most popular, Nolan Bushnell being the guy who created Atari, with Rami Ishmael being one of the guys behind Vlambeer who did games like the Nuclear Throne. And he also does a lot of talks and things and he's a critic and there isn't really any really way to really say it nicer than saying he is an indie darling and I mean that in the nicest way possible. <laughs> These awards not announced without controversy, with the controversy being specifically around Nolan Bushnell. As I said before, Nolan Bushnell was the creator of Atari and one of the guys who created the advent of the arcades, but that does not mean he had, does not have a clean record around workplace antics, to put it in as nice words as possible. On the announcement of his nomination, many stories came out around his... I'm not really sure how to put it. It's sexist would be... It's stupid, sexist. There's quite a few words I can really come up with. It's when it comes out where one of the stories is him doing business out of a hot tub. It's dumb as also being weird. And as these stories gain traction and more into the public, GDC decided to not just pull Nolan Bushnell's award, but not 
give away the Pioneer Award at all this year. In a statement they said, The Game Developers Choice Awards Advisory Committee who vote on the special award winners for each show have made the decision not to give out a Pioneer Award for this year's event, following additional feedback from the community. They believe their pick should reflect the values of today's game industry and will dedicate this year's award to honour the pioneering and unheard voices of the past. And when reached out for comment, Nolan Bushnell responded saying, I applaud the GDC for ensuring that their institution reflects what is right, specifically with regards to how people should be treated in the workplace. And if that means an award is the price I have to pay personally so the whole industry may be more aware and sensitive to these issues, I applaud that too. If my personal actions or the actions of anyone who ever worked with me offended or caused pain to anyone at our companies, then I apologise without reservation. So he's a apologized it's one of those apologies that is an apology without admission that anything's happened it's an apology by going sorry if you found it bad it's one of those yeah it's wishy-washy it's probably the best way to really think of it wishy-washy would be a bit of a bad term i think the best way to really put it is to just say it's a pr apology it's yes the damage is done just but if pulling the award means that the indiscretions of the past start coming up again, perhaps this might be a good move to remind people that the years of yesteryear were not necessarily great. <laughs> and so, before I leave you again, here is the UK All Formats Gaming Chart, again graciously supplied by UKIE Limited. As for a week, not much has changed. UFC is coming to number two, otherwise... Not much has really changed. Deceita Final Fantasy NT is also going to the charts again. Otherwise, nothing's changed. And finally, here are the games that are going to be released this week. If you want to read them all, pause the video. And that is it for this week. If you found this video informative, please do consider subscribing and sharing the video around. And I will see you next week for the next Press Rush.